went to summer school Summer school Ooh Where the kids are cool Well, the other big trend this summer, killer robots. Terminator, Transformers. Uh, I loved Terminator 4. I, I, I get really defensive about it because so many people hated it, and I'm like, dude, you know, take a chill pill. It was awesome. I liked it, but I realized the one thing I like about Terminators is, is, is it's the one unstoppable killing machine. And uh, Terminator 4, I did like it, but it was an example of more is sometimes less. Well, I, you know, I love anything big. If you give me big lizards, I'll go see them. Unless Roland Emmerich happens to be directing it. Well, that's a big school. iguana, so... But, I, I mean, and I have to say, Transformers, the first Transformers was the best movie ever made oh. about robots beating beating each other up. Oh. There was <laughs> never... Robot shocks? I mean, somebody would say maybe Terminator 2 was the best, but... But it but, had Shia LaBeouf in it. But giant... I know, but, but the, the, the visual effects in those movies are the most insane ever, ever... But that's not what makes a movie committed. good. That is not what makes a movie yes, good. Yes, but, but I'm, not not, I'm not saying that it was a good movie. Was, you but, just said it was the best movie of robots beating believable. each other up. I don't, I don't buy that at all. Oh, I think... They, no, it, you know what, what that transforming looks like to me in the second film as well, which I haven't seen yet, but I've seen in trailers, um, it looks like what happens when you stick a magnet in sand yeah, and exactly. bits of iron it ore. Not, like, it just like it doesn't. It, makes no sense. it doesn't look like the actual mechanical movements yeah. of something robotic. Which I mean, obviously, you can't it's buy an actual Transformers anyway. action figure for what they're doing right now. Because like, yeah. you'd be like sitting can't there going, possibly. "Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly." You can't figure that out. But I just, I mean, I think like visual effects. That's fine, and it's fine to look at it and say, and and obviously, it's it it comes from a place of. Uh, cartoon storytelling that doesn't require a great deal of, of maturity or meaning, but when you're spending that much money on a movie, and when you have that much talent in a room to make a movie, and you have the ability to kind of pick and choose who's going to be making the movie, why say that because it had badass visual effects, it's it's okay that it was also really stupid, or that it's okay <coughs> that that we like we went for these jokes of like honestly that first I, I cannot get past hearing Optimus Prime say, my bad, when he's like stumbling around in the backyard like the Keystone Cops. Like the, I just, I think like, why does that, why would that be charming? I why is that I also heard about relatable? lots of peeing and pooing on humans in the second right. movie. Right, yeah. A little bit. Dogs having sex. Yeah. yeah. That's, uh, there, there's a movie for you. I like Michael Bay if he doesn't try to be festivals. funny. <laughs> yeah, exactly, you know? exactly. If it's just blowing stuff up, I like it. But when he if tries to be funny, and explosions? <laughs> it's suddenly my six-year-old cousin telling poo-poo jokes. I don't understand why the Decepticons can turn into jet fighters and fly across the planet while the Autobots are stuck driving on the freeways. Because it's science they chose, fiction. They shouldn't have chose the name Autobot. Yeah. Well, yeah, they, got, I mean, they got stuck with the sucky I've, name. Yeah. yeah, I mean, is that what it is? I, 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 I would think, like, if you have a, an army, a military force that can fly... You're always going to... You're going to outmaneuver. The yeah, yeah. The, the, the Autobots, and the Autobots are all GM cars. <laughs> I mean, they've all gone yeah. bankrupt. I mean, well, how are they going to replace their parts? I'd like to see a Japanese Transformers, you know, where they have Japanese cars. Well, Mazinga Z was, like, my favorite cartoon growing up when I was a little kid. I mean, like, GM versus Toyota. Yeah, we, we, could we have a hybrid Transformer, maybe? Right. Yeah, a green green Transformer. <laughs> yeah. But, although, yeah, I, I guess there's a, the auto, there's a, there is an Autobot jet fire who's in the new movie, the old man they find in the Smithsonian. He's, he's an, or no, he was a Decepticon, now he's an Autobot. Oh, okay, so you have to start out. But he's not really an Autobot because he's a jet, he's an SR-71 Blackbird. Well, just going back though, what is yeah. it about killer robots? Is it the, the idea that technology is gonna get away from us? Yeah, I think that's that primal fear that our, it's that Frankenstein story, you know, that our creation we're going to lose control of our creation and it's going to come back to It's not interesting us. if we don't have uh, robots going wrong. It's the same thing like uh, Mission to Mars. If we don't have a Mission to Mars going wrong, then my, why make a movie? Right. Well, I think, you know, the, the, you're, it's interesting. The, any technology, whether it's Colossus, the Forbin project, which was made in the late 60s, where this giant computer system links up with the Russian computer system and they decide that they're going to take over the world. I mean, it's, it's something that, that is an irresistible story conceit mm -hmm. and you can always make it work from a dramatic standpoint. And in 2001 you've got the HAL computer you know coming up with some ideas of his own that aren't necessarily compatible with 
you know. Whatever. Or mm-hmm. Demon Seed, where Proteus decides Julie Christie's going to bear his child. <laughs> I, I think part of that comes from also how intimidating the understanding of technology actually is. And there's a very small subset of the population at any given time that really knows how technology works or has an intimate understanding of the vocabulary and the actual mechanics of things. And so when whenever, I mean, we, we kind of make a joke out of it all the time when someone's very tech savvy and they understand how to do things, we kind of think like, that. You know, that's, yeah. there's, there's nothing good about that. It's, it's alienating. I don't want to know. And so when there was in the age where um, supercomputers were like taking up whole rooms with, you know, beeping lights and ticker tape coming out and whatever, that like there was a sense of like, I don't know how that works. And the fact that I don't know how it works makes me feel less. So mm-hmm. I'm intimidated by it. It makes me feel bad that there's this technology that I that, that makes me stupid because I don't know how to pronounce it or that I don't know what operating system means or whatever. <laughs> and then and then that that's that's what kind of gives rise to you appeal to that insecurity in people by saying, like, oh, it, it really is bad and fear it, fear it. Well, now it's kind of you know we've become so involved with our technology. A lot of people just can't function without right. these our yeah. gadgets, and mm-hmm. if they break, we don't know how to fix them. You know, we call tech support and sit on the hold for an sure, hour. Sure, I'm talk just to some sitting here idiot. the whole time thinking, "Where's my iPhone?" Yeah, I yeah, could be it, twittering this shit. Exactly, we're so <laughs> we're into that, but we don't know what to do with it. It's, yeah. it's taken control of our lives in a lot of well, ways. Well, that's the other fear: we don't know what's going to happen to technology. Yeah. Even the people who understood how that big computer that filled up a room worked. None of them imagined that they were going to have a computer in their home. Right. That was insane, mm-hmm. you know. And just sort of this idea that we, you know, we, we put the technology out there and we don't know where it's well, going to go. Well, and I actually think there is a need to be like, oh, to to constantly be monitoring how much technology frees us of choice and how much we we sort of turn over the reins of what influences us and what we consume. Like, if all you do is select a series of RSS feeds and that's all the news that you read, well, that's right. great. Except you're not actually parsing whether or not the quality of those feeds wavers year over year. And so like, you know, you do have like as much information as there is available to us and as easy as it is to get, it's like we we try and simplify it to the point where we stop discerning. It's a sort of a self imposed brainwashing in a way. That we we select where we're gonna get our news from and the news sources becoming more and more polarized politically right. or oh, whatever. Yeah. Where as, as our, our dying, changes yeah. it, it changes our perception of reality. I mean, I think you know, not to get all political, but Republicans and Democrats, I think they've shown in surveys, have very different perceptions of reality and what's Absolutely. going on in this country. That's kind of frightening to me. That yeah. They, yeah. We, we, we generated such a distrust of the media, you know, like, well, you can't trust CNN because they're liberal. Well, you can't trust Fox because they're And then there's us international right? people who, uh, who think you're all crazy. Yeah. You're, <laughs> <laughs> you and your socialized crazy medicine. <laughs> but, but I also think what's interesting about science fiction, I think, mm-hmm. uh, and especially Star Trek, going back to Star Trek, was all of the things that we don't understand that might that might terrify us, whether it's somebody of a different race or somebody of a different religion or somebody from a different planet or, or the M5 computer that might replace my job as captain of the Enterprise, it would, it would seek out, so to speak, this, these new things and approach, like all good science fiction mm-hmm. does, uh, and try and overcome these fears and show how they might work in human in, in our human reality in the future and things like that and yeah and I think that technology will save us our technology is the single greatest thing that we have going for us and we need to constantly be increasing our technology and we need to constantly be understanding and questioning our technology. But technology has to be a tool you can't right. become so reliant on it that you atrophy all of the, the processes that technology takes yeah. over for you right no but and, uh, but the thing is I think what technology but I mean that happens right, I mean it does. Uh, People 200 years ago could remember way more than they can well, now. Well, I was just going to say, uh, like, I, um, how, how many phone numbers do you actually know anymore? Yeah. You know, you, you don't have any need to dial them ever. So most people, like, I, I, a, I used to know oh, them all. I'm I was sorry. at a cash register not long ago, and the, the checkout lady... Cash register? You yeah. don't <laughs> say! <laughs> <laughs> and the, I, I did a simple math calculation in my head over some something and she she was dumbfounded on how you were able to do that without a calculator or a, or a cash register right. computer. Number magician. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, you wizard. wizard. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Getting back to the topic, what is the best killer robot? You think uh, the Terminators and Terminator 4? Oh no, no, okay. Robert Patrick. Terminator ah. is the man. I mean, it, it was 000. all about the, <laughs> that did it for me, that face. <laughs> I know. For Sexiest me, it's, it's, I loved how he underplayed it. He always, you could always tell he just. He, 
Yep. He's a fine looking boy. <laughs> yep. Say, that's a nice bike. Yeah. What do you think? Favorite killer oh robot? Oh my god, there's so many. I mean, we did a whole panel at Comic Con years ago. The Robot Rumble. The Robot Rumble. Starship oh, that's Spectre right. Series. We had Who was the winner of the Robot Rumble? Gort, I believe. Yes, Gort. 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 Ooh, going old school. I'm Mecha assuming Godzilla, classical maybe? He's Gort. He's a good killer robot. Mecha, Mecha Godzilla is a, but Mecha Godzilla isn't really a robot because he's piloted. Right. Uh, Although true. there is a, there is a, there's, it's the difference between real robots and super robots when you're dealing with Japanese anime. It's a whole different. I like Cylons. I think Cylons are a great killer robot. Which Both well, there's an interesting like thing of like yeah. that slavery metaphor that like we sort of brought it on ourselves. Do you have a favorite number? I like the gold Cylon Centurion, Vulpa from. Uh, the oh, I meant for the new series. ones. Do you have a favorite new one? Oh, the oh, the humanoid Cylons. Wow. Oh, they're all so sexy. I, don't know. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you you take your pick, from Lucy Lawless to Grace Park mm. to oh, yeah. Lucy Lawless to Trisha Helfer to. I don't know. You what? Lucy Lawless may have the edge with me. I don't know. I, I was going to say, she, she can kick your ass because she's Xena too, right? <laughs> That's right. Any love for Maria from Metropolis? She was a good killer she robot. She was a good killer robot. And then when she turned into a human, you could sleep with her, and then she would be, she's good. She was the only robot. She was not mechanical. She sort of destroyed you by inflaming the passions of the working that's, classes. That's, that's right. No, that's, she's definitely a good killer what robot. What about Blade Runner? Oh, uh, yeah. those are good killer robots. Well, are those are those are like the is a replicant or yeah. official human? That's a really that's we they would, never we say have, actually. We yeah. would yeah, yeah we we got in these debates. Is what's the difference between I think an it was a genetically designed person though? Because they mm -hmm. have that's the a, eyes, yeah, the right. real eyes. Well, right. So they're were, biological. There's so no were the mechanical. new Cylons. Well, that was a, they never they never I, the one thing I did not like about the new Battlestar Galactica is they could never figure out what the Cylons really were. That was yeah the pilot you had the glowing red spine right. and yet. You know, they couldn't develop a Cylon detector that could detect a glowing spine. Yeah. <laughs> and, and now human beings can procreate with Cylons. If right. that's true, they're not robots. I, I felt they were, they were biological. But they had to be biological. Kind of you tell a cyborg, yeah. Spine, but, yeah, but the, and the fact that they can, I mean. Or they could interface with computers that could plug wires into their arms. And all that, it never worked. I yeah. wouldn't want to do that. It was never <laughs> understood, explained. Or, I would. I could catch up on all my RSS feeds if I could just plug in. I'm going to mainline some data, man. Yeah. I like Box <laughs> from Logan's Run. He was a good killer robot, and he was a sculptor too. So. It was good. He was good because he was friendly, you know. Yeah. He was just he meant well. For a while. He just wanted to keep his friends close. Plankton. How about Small Wonder? Did oh. she ever kill anybody? She killed me when I tried watching one of those she, episodes. <laughs> she killed him inside. Yeah, she's a soul killer. How about you, uh, Mary? Uh, I, well, I I think that yeah, my 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 fondness for the animated Japanese stuff, like those aren't mm -hmm. technically you know sentient beings, especially like with uh, Mazinger Z, who trans or Z in the United States, like any of those ones where a bunch of ships fly together and there's like the, you know, the kids piloting them. Those to me seemed you know massive, these massive monolithic creatures that would have these great. You know, powerful fights, but the, all of the emotion was happening in the soap opera of the of the staff. Yeah, there you know, wasn't the any. Yeah, there wasn't any sense of like technology getting away from us. It was us getting controlling these it. Great yeah, things. and maybe yeah. that maybe that's a uniquely Japanese perspective because I mean they. I think that uh, that there is definitely more of a leaning in uh, Japanese fiction in animation and in film that. Uh, that it's possible to tell those stories without having to have a huge morality tale associated. It might just be the difference between like East and West in terms of philosophies, but um, I think there's obviously big morality tales in the Godzilla series. Like there's there's definitely a, a moral to be um, to be learned there, but ultimately it's still just really fun to see those monsters yeah. duke it out. That's why I love Transformers. <laughs>